Welcome everyone. My name is Pierre Hohmann. I work at the Research Institute of Organic Agriculture. And in today's seminar, I'm going to talk about new selection concepts for breeding for intercropping. I will focus on legume cereal mixtures as they have shown high potential to produce stable yields at lower external inputs. And also because there has hardly been any breeding effort going on for bee specific mixtures, despite the fact that selection efficiency under pure stand conditions are moderate at best. I will apply concepts from hybrid breeding to intercropping, specifically general and specific combining ability. Um, I will explore incomplete factorial designs to mitigate certain limitations of full factorials. I will look at fraction yields and how they can be exploited towards yield and competition optimization. And lastly, link plant traits to biological interactions as a means to further improve mixed cropping systems. I will explore these concepts on a specific mixture with the legume pea and the cereal barley. And here, first I would like to show you the diversity of morphologies present in, in modern pea and barley cultivars. And I think it's not difficult to imagine um, that the, the selection of a particular cultivar or of, of different morphologies um, very much affect the interaction that is going on between these two crop species when they are grown together. So on this slide, I'm trying to demonstrate the analogy of test cross hybrids, so a concept from hybrid breeding and binary mixtures. We have um, on the top the P cultivars, so a large number of P cultivars to be tested, um, which would be the lines. And then we have a smaller number of barley cultivars here in this example too, which from hybrid breeding would be the testers. And then the individual mixtures in the center um, are then in, similar to the test cross hybrids. So we are moving from the hybrid concept of general combining ability to a term that um, is called general mixing ability. And this general mixing ability is then the average performance of a genotype of a cultivar in a series of mixture combinations. And um, so to illustrate this, I, I, I'm, I'm adding these uh, GMA effects to the two barley testers, you see one barley tester gives overall a performance of plus two compared to the average and the other barley as a consequence of minus two. So this would be across the, the performance of the first barley cultivar across all P genotypes would be um, the general mixing ability. And, and then there is the term specific mixing ability, which is then the deviation from the GMA effect of a specific combinations. So for instance, you would have um, a plus two of barley one and a general mixing ability of plus two of barley one and a general mixing ability of plus one of P cultivar one which would lead for the first mixing combination um, a, a value for of plus three. But when in fact this, this um, whatever we are measuring here, this value would deviate from plus three, might it be larger, plus five or lower, plus one or even minus, then we would have an indication of SMA, so the specific mixing ability. So when we apply this concept now to mixture yield, we, we come to the following equation where we can see 
the um, GMA effect of a given P cultivar on mixture yield, here designated as GPI, and the GMA effect of a given bar barley cultivar on mixture yield, designated here as GBJ. And, um, and also the SMA effect, uh, so the interaction term between these two cultivars, designated as SIJ. Now let's take this simplified concept to an actual real-world example where we want to test a large number of p-genotypes in this example, 30 different p-cultivars uh, in combination with eight different barley cultivars. So you can see if I want to test all possible combinations, you would actually end up with um, 8 times 30, so 240 different combinations that need to be tested. Which, when you consider that you also need replication and testing it in different environments, um, is a very resource-intensive um, exercise. So here you're actually seeing with the number ones indicating in the boxes that um, we are having an incomplete factorial design where only 25% of all possible combinations are going to be tested. And um, so to illustrate that again, we have um, four different designs. There is um, the 8 times 30 full factorial design which, as mentioned, is resource very resource expensive. And if we are now comparing it to um, the bottom design that I just showed, um, design D, um, taking only testing 25% of the combinations, um, we can now compare this with two. And well, the assumption would be that these um, 60 combinations is is a feasible um, number that can be tested by a breeder. And now we are we are comparing this to two full factorial designs with a similar amount of combinations. We have design B, where we have an eight times eight full factorial, which will be um, a good system to identify GMA and SMA effects for both crop species involved. And the other um, full factorial would have unequal dimensions, <clears throat> testing a larger number of P's, here also 30, but only um, in combination with two barleys. So here's the, the focus is on um, we have we have p as a focal species here you can now see the results of a simulation study that compares these four different trial designs that i just introduced um, we looked at the variance estimates so how how um, close to the truth the different models um, estimated the variance of the G PGMA, the barley GMA, and the SMA effects, and also um, how well the um, the associated uh, effects correlate to to true effects. We have two different scenarios. Um, one scenario is where we actually have uh, an SMA effect present, and the other scenario where, it's, where the SMA effect is absent. I don't want to go into detail on those numbers. I uh, just wanted to present it here to you so that you can have a look, closer look at it if you, um, if you want to, and also refer to the publication to bring those results um, into context. 
the take home message I have for you is that the incomplete design D um, yields comparable estimates to those full factorials with um, equal number of resources. Now we come to the producer and associate concept, which tackles the fraction yields of a species mixture. Before we had this equation where we have the effects of pea and barley on overall mixture yield. And now we can disentangle both of those effects to um, the actual fraction yields of the P yield and the bar barley yield. We have the GMA effect of P, which becomes the producer P and the associate P effect. So this is then the effect of P on its own yield or the effect of P on barley yield. And the same we can do for barley. We have the producer and associate effects of barley, which is the producer effect is the effect of barley on its own yield, so on the barley yield. And we have the effect of barley on the companion species P. Which then result into these two equations um, on um, for the for the two fraction yields, the barley and the the P yield. And on the left side, you see the uh, an illustration of those effects again. If we now come back to our example where we're um, testing 30 different pea cultivars in mixture with barley and um, show this graphical representation of the producer and associate effects of P, we can we can extract quite a, um, quite some valuable information from this graph. If we're bringing in a, 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 a line with the slope of minus one, then we can determine the cultivars that either show a positive GMA effect, which is above this line, or a negative GMA effect. In addition to that, we can of course also see the positive and negative, the cultivars with a positive and negative associate effect and with the positive and negative producer effect. And this leads us um, to different um, options of, of selection. One option could be that we're um, selecting for overall high GMA which indicates um, the lines above this gray area. Another option would be if we're more interested in maintaining a certain proportion of P in the mixture, we could have a, a different a selection for where we are only applying a certain minimum GMA threshold that has to be met and um, reduce stronger um, associate effects of P in order to um, get a higher P ratio into in the mixture. So there are different ways to use um, this information and um, characterize the contribution of um, the cultivars to mixture yield. Last but not least, I would like to introduce the concept of biological interaction function. We have, we have seen the benefits of um, dealing with or um, assessing GMA and also produce and associate effects. However, they do not um, reveal necessarily the underlying biological processes. So when we now take these effects and link it with actual plant traits, uh, others other than yield, we are able to um, maximize overall mixture yield and explore these biological interaction functions. 
So here's a, an illustration of this where we have the effects, either the GMA producer or associate on the y-axis and any given, any um, all possible um, relationships with, with a given trait. So we can have a scenario where a trait positively correlates with GMA, has no correlation or negatively correlates with GMA. This might this is a is a valuable indicator indicator to identify key traits um, that indicate that indicate a good mixture performance. But if we're now um, going the the step further and also correlate these traits with the effects on the fraction yields, we actually get um, a more differentiated view on um, the underlying function. For example, in the, in the first case, the, G, the positive GMA effect can be the positive correlation with, with, with um, GMA can be either due to a positive correlation only of the producer effect or only of the associate effect, in which case we would have commensalism. So one um, species gains benefit while the other um, is not affected. Or we can also have um, this positive GMA correlation um, in a mutualistic way where actually um, both partners benefit. So we can take this producer associate trait relationships as a tool to discover trait functions and better understand community ecology and eventually use these biological interaction functions to improve breeding for intercropping. We can now go um, to an applied example again of those 30p genotypes. And um, this is just an example of canopy height where we see um, a weak but a not significant correlation of canopy height on the overall mixture yield. So in this, in this, if you only look at the correlation to to overall mixture yield, you wouldn't recognize this um, trait as relevant. However, if you're now looking at the effects on fraction yields, you see a strong um, positive correlation with the, the effect of the canopy height on P fraction yield and the negative effect correlation on um, the barley fraction yield. So canopy height in this context can be um, a valuable trait to steer the yield ratio between P and barley. In summary, I hope I could convey that the choice of cultivar is important if we want to further optimize intercropping systems. Um, and we can use these incomplete factorials to increase selection intensities, which is mainly due to the fact that we are, can, that we are able to test a larger number of cultivars with um, a limited amount of resources. We have the producer and associate concept that um, allows to evaluate the contribution of a cultivar to mixture yield. And beyond that, linking these producer and associate traits, um, associate effects to traits, which help to shape um, species mixtures via these biological interaction functions and assess competition and facilitation effects. So in conclusion, we can, we can use these concepts to speed up the breeding process 
and also optimize mixture yield and its composition. An important remark I also want to make is, although I haven't showed it um, for the sake of clarity, you can apply these concepts also in the context of um, genotype by environment interactions. With this, I come to an end and I'd like to thank you for your attention.